And I want to say everything that I'm saying right now in love. There's nothing that I'm saying that is like trying to like bash anybody or call anyone out, especially, you know, as far as I can see, this woman is pregnant and congratulations. And I hope that you have a very safe and beautiful uh, journey through uh, childbirth. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so I just want to say that. Hi, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Ayana Supreme and I am doing a sit down video. Um, but this video in particular is a response to a creator named Maraji, uh, Maraji's World. And I was up literally like four o'clock in the morning and I was editing um, uh, essay that my son wrote and I needed to, you know, keep myself awake. So I saw this video that popped up and the title of the video is so controversial uh, and it says why we don't like our own hair so um i watch it in its entirety probably several times so um i'm going to work from memory about the things that i uh took from it so um you know on my particular channel i um feature lock tutorials about like how I care for my locks and I share a lot of my lock journey and in addition to that I also do wig reviews so a lot of the initial excerpts that she used was about how um, you know some black women's experiences uh, in terms of their relationship with their natural hair which is such a nuanced complicated uh, conversation and I love to watch other people's experiences. I am an African-American woman originally from the New York City area and you know growing up I was surrounded by black women so my hair was never anything out of the ordinary because I grew up with all the women in my family being natural, all of my mother's friends were natural. My mother never had a relaxer, so I grew up in a very um, pan-African home. Uh, so natural hair or just being black was extremely celebrated. And that was the environment that I was until I was thrusted into a Latin community in El Bajio. And my hair was a big issue amongst my peers, meaning other black girls made fun of my natural textured hair and it really affected my self-esteem. Whole battle, mm -hmm. you know, natural hair versus wigs or weaves. What's your take on it? Oh. Don't bring your natural <laughs> hair to my event. I have it. natural hair. I but just, I'm wearing a wig. But why would I want to wear a nice as dress, expensive dress, mm -hmm. expensive ears? Mm. At least I'll do ponytail. I noticed that although the black boys did not like the black girls, I was too, you know, dark in complexion. My hair wasn't the right texture. And so, you know, things completely changed for me uh, for the worse. And I had to deal with that until I finally confronted it face on, which is when I was 19 years old. So I went from like nine years old, developing a hatred for my hair until I was 19 years old and was just like, first of all, I'm really pretty, like to me even if nobody else can see it i'm beautiful and i don't need hair so i cut up all my hair at 19 right just i felt really really comfortable and confident in that and i have been natural ever since now on my channel i do do wig reviews right that is not because i don't like my hair it's because i love it so much that i'm not willing to dye it and i'm not willing to alter it in any other kind of way because at the end of the day this is who i am and i want to model that for my daughters and i also want my sons to see this on a regular basis and understand that this is beautiful um but you did make a delineation between black and african and i thought that was very interesting considering that there's a lot of africans that don't necessarily consider themselves to be black and I'm not saying that you don't know this, but I just, the wording kind of threw me, right? So I just, I felt like I couldn't understand why we couldn't all sit under the umbrella of blackness. 
Moroccans, Tunisians, people from Libya, and also people from Egypt are on the continent of Africa, but don't necessarily consider themselves to be African people. But African Americans, even though many try to escape the realities of our DNA, we are ultimately also African people, just on a different continent via the slave trade. I know you mentioned uh, Afro-Latinos, which I went to school with, and you mentioned how they love their natural hair because they embrace it. Uh, when reality is, is that uh, I think a lot of Afro-Latino people came into loving their natural hair around the same time that African-American women came into loving their hair. In New York City, or maybe other Latin uh, communities, getting a Dominican blowout is a special kind of blowout. That's actually what led me to getting locks because I went there with my loose natural hair at the time and she fried my hair to the death to the extent where it smelled like smoke. It was really bad. And so, but that's a common thing. You know, you go to the Dominican salon, they blow dry your hair to the death. If you have perfectly heat trained hair, then it doesn't like adversely impact you. But if you don't and they don't use the right protections, your hair is as good as dead. Also, I want to go lock my hair, um, like get a retwist at a beauty school. And to get your locks retwisted in this city is crazy expensive, okay? Like it's insanely expensive. So um, I went to a beauty school that was right down the block and I'm going to a woman that I see as a black woman until she spoke and I realized that, oh, this woman is from the Dominican Republic and she was not prepared for locks. And she felt so uncomfortable touching my hair. Now, I'm visually looking at another black woman. Clearly, we were both, you know, results of human trafficking, right? Um, but she was uncomfortable just washing, touching. And she tried so hard to like not do my hair that she wanted to like fixate and worry about the mannequins and like their straight hair. Cause that's what she, was more interested in doing as opposed to being paid to do my hair. Uh, it was very humiliating. So I just wanted to highlight an example of how some Afro-Latino people don't necessarily embrace their natural hair. Some do, there's no denying that. Some are very aware of their African lineage and heritage. This is different island, different language, different foods, right? To a degree. And then that's it, right? But then there's others that really are not fond of being African, Latin, American. Skipping to the part about the black women collectively, are uh, irrespective of where they are in the world, our relationship with hair that is not ours, and how you said that um, it's one thing if you get like wigs that is um, of the same like texture as your own versus like getting straight wigs and how like other people should have access to getting hair like ours. It is not to say that white women or women of other backgrounds other than white do not add hair to their own natural hair for length or beauty purposes. Historically, this is not uh, the standard of beauty, right? So I think that we are now getting to the place where socially it's not a sight to behold. I feel like we are we are allowed to have access to creativity and explore different things without damaging our hair. Cause you did mention like, oh, like a lot of black women use the excuse of wanting to protect uh, their hair and not take care of it in the process of that sometimes. I agree with that completely. Like. Some people say that and don't actually do it, but then some people actually say that and actually do that and they do have a ton of hair beneath the weave. I think there's actually a, um, a young woman with a YouTube channel uh, called Beneath the Weave or something like that. Hair is beautiful. So anyway, <laughs> I heard what you said and it is a topic and I really love this kind of discussion about our hair and i wonder will we ever get to the point where like whatever you do with it is not necessarily a political statement or a, a identifier in terms of like if you relax your hair you don't love yourself because i don't agree with that i feel like she can relax her hair because that's her hair and that's what she wants to do she gets to express it 
in a way in which she desires to express it. Like if I was to relax my hair next week, I am no less black. It, it changes nothing. I don't think my locks make me more black because who I am is who I am is who I am is who I am. I think that there is something to say about the relationship between other cultures and black hair. So you did mention that, saying that we shouldn't gatekeep our styles. I'm curious as to knowing, do we gatekeep enough? And the reason why I pose this question is because every time I turn on a commercial, every time I listen to the radio, I'm hearing people use Ebonics, which is could just consider like regular American slang, but it specifically is Ebonics and everyone has access to that. No cap facts. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then these very same groups that are outside of us are able to turn around and say, you have no culture. But you're using my language, I have no culture. I don't really understand that. And then not only that, our culture is so heavily marketed to other people. It's poorly marketed because we don't necessarily control our own images in the way in which many people would believe that we do. You know, it just gives people like a superficial access to who we are and our lived experiences, supposedly. And there's just no real respect for it. <laughs> Um, I just feel like we should gatekeep a little bit. I'm sorry, like we should. Like, we're all human beings. We can all respectfully explore other people's cultures. That's common sense. Because how else do you learn if you don't explore and get to know? But I could tell you something. Living in, within the city of New York, there are so many different cultures. You can't name one place in this world that a, a person representing that particular group does not live in this city. But I promise you, we may live amongst and beside, and we may even have some relationships. And some of us may even marry, but by and large, we're very side by side. And there's a lot that we don't necessarily know about each other's cultural aspects, right? But I do believe that there is a general level of respect for other people but by and large it's not gonna happen <laughs> there's so much stigma still of being black visibly black not questionably black and with my hair texture i will not be invited to a lot of spaces but however a lot of people lend themselves into mine and take on my language or you would say um, it's okay to just, you know, open up and like get to know. If you get to know, you open up and you be respectful. I'm still learning about what it is to be African American and all of our history and experiences and stuff like that. And, you know, I respect the people that came before me and I will respect other people in their other communities. It is not common, because I don't want to say it doesn't exist because that's not true either. It is not common for a white woman to go to a job interview with cornrows and expect for everyone to take them seriously. Even in today's age of, you know, you can be what you want, right? But I agree with many of the points that you brought up in terms of we have a very nuanced and complex relationship with our hair. We have a very nuanced and complicated relationship with the spaces that we occupy. Um, but I, I feel like it varies location to location to location. You know, I've been in all white environments before, wore my natural hair, took up space and felt completely confident. People have a lot of like ideas and like perceptions about things. And it's always interesting to hear other people's thoughts about it. And sometimes I do feel like as a collective that we do have some similar uh, ideas and experiences. But then at the same time, a lot of us interpret things differently. I eventually want for my daughters to see that uh, whatever shape they decide to do in terms of like take form, in terms of like their outward expression regarding their hair. If they were to get a Caesar, which I've had before, gray afro which they have right now lock their hair which i'm considering for my oldest daughter um but she's still on her dusty face like all over the place um that they will be beautiful in each version that they decide to present themselves 
there's beauty in that 100% so um so yeah thank you so much and uh, I wish you well